Hello, Padawan. How are you feeling so far? Do you like it? You don't like it? You're not quite sure? Is this something you'll use? I guess that's a better question. Well, I've been using it for seven years. So going forward, I'm sure I'm going to be using it for a lot longer. It's fun to see where everybody's growing from here. Because in our coaching calls, we have folks that are at all different levels. And we come in and we can ask questions and answer questions. And just get to know each other. Get to know like-minded people. I think that's the hardest thing for GIS folks. You, you got to find your people. There, GIS is such a big world. And if you can find your people and you can talk with your people, it makes life so much more fun. I work remote. So that means I don't get to talk to a whole lot of people. But I love these coaching calls because we get feedback on things. We can you know, QC somebody's survey or maybe just share a piece of code to help them along the way. And then we keep all that code in a toolbox. I also like to say thank you to Bad Elf for giving us the opportunity to do these classes for free. And we did the coaching calls for free for the first six weeks. If you missed that, you can get into the coaching calls for the price of a few tacos. Just click the link somewhere in the show notes and we'll get you in. All right, so what we're looking at here is this is the family address book. And the reason we like the family address book is because everybody can um, use it out of the gate. You know, you have family and friends, you might want to get their addresses. You can actually have them do your surveys for you. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to show you around just a little bit. Um, so there's your detail page. Last week we learned about our thumbnails. Um, you can add your summary and your description, sometimes for the description. Um, if I'm at work, I might say um, your survey one, two, three professional, Michelle Williams, phone number, address, whatever, or phone number and um, email. All right, and then we're going to go into the options tab. And I always turn on required fields to, or required updates to all the surveys because your end user doesn't know when you've made updates. And if you turn this on, then it always tells them, hey, you need to update. Hey, you need to update. The impo most important thing you should know about this is if you turn this on and it's an older survey that your end users are using, you need to go tell every single one of them, maybe in a meeting, that they need to update their survey. Here's the maps. Now you can add your own base map. But what this says is this is the default that the end user is going to see when they update their survey. And so you might have, you might want the imagery, but you can also add your own base maps. That's a training for another day. So if you want that kind of a training, then go into the, um, go into survey123jedi.com and get into the intermediate class. Uh, that'll, that'll be more in depth. This is the media folder. So that's anything that's in your media folder. This is anything that's linked to your survey one, two, three. Now, nothing's in here because we haven't published it. So there's nothing linking to it. When you publish it, uh, you're going to get your first map that survey one, two, three creates when you publish. That's going to be the only thing that's in your linked folder. We don't have scripts. That's where those would go. And then we have a schema and then a couple other things that I've never used. All right, so now we can hit the publish button and we'll go into options and if your folks will ever be offline, hit this enable seek. That's going to help because um, the computer holds the data until they get into Wi-Fi services. We can hit this analyze button. It looks like I have two informational ones. I can already see what those are. Um, so I'm going to double. I'm going to click on this. It's going to give me its own spreadsheet, and it's telling me that the LinkedIn note and the challenge note don't need to have um, data in the name column, and that's here and here. And so I'm going to remove those. I usually put those in there just for myself so that I know what we were doing. And now we can say save. Now we can publish. We can still go to analyze and see if we cleared those up. They're all clean. And we can say publish survey. All right, so the publishing is complete. We can hit, hit OK. Now there's still some things we need to do. We need to go share this with the world, or at least with our folks. So go into your AGOL account. All right, so what you're looking at here is in my all my content. 
um, my three files that survey one, two, three creates is in the very top, which is great. Now, if you want to find those in their folder, they actually are down here in these folders with the word survey right in front of them. So what we want to do first is we want to share these. We want to share them with everyone and we want to save. Now, it's going to give you some um, information because I didn't make this public data inside my feature service. So let's try again. Let's go into my feature service. Settings and then come down here. Now, if this is something we're going live with, I would um, check this box right here so that it doesn't get deleted. Um, also, public data collection, that's what we want because we want our users, your friends and family, to be able to do this survey. So click on that one and hit save. And then since we're in here, we might as well do a few more things. I like to keep, keep track of changes. And if this wasn't just for our friends and family, I would enable Seek because that means that if ever your users are offline um, with their devices, the device will hold their data for them while they're offline. Um, we don't really need that here, but it's a good habit to get into. What kind of editing is allowed? We're just going to um, allow ads. And then I had to look this one up a little earlier, allow updates of true curves. This is kind of cool because if you have four or five lines that are in an arc, uh, this will actually turn them into an arc and they will have calculations instead of just lines. Um, I don't know what this true curve client is, but if somebody wants to help me out, um, I'd love to hear your point of view on that if you're using it. And then I scroll to the bottom and I always click export data because eventually we're going to need to do a dashboard that exports data or we're going to need um, a web app or web app builder. Um, and we're going to need to download some data. So if you do it here, since you're already here, then you don't have to remember to do it or kind of try to do the mental gymnastics when it's not working for you in the future. So I hit save. And then let's go back. Now we can go one, two, three, and share with everyone. Hit save, making the optimal performance and data at least continue. Okay, disabling the edit or using non editable view layer. Um, I'm going to update it anyways because I want my end users to be able to add their data. And just a few minutes ago, I went in and I did a view of the data, which is what that little note was saying to do. And I shared that one, but I didn't share the normal hosted service and it didn't work. I don't do public surveys except for in class. So um, if you have a suggestion on how to make that better, let me know. All right, so now what we wanna do, we've, we've shared those publicly, but there's another place we need to go. See these nine dots up here? Click those and click survey one, two, three. And here's that address book, <clears throat> excuse me. Go over here to see how there's a, a few different um, pieces of information here. Go to Collaborate, which is the second one. And that's where you're going to find your link and your QR code. Just know that you need to figure out how you want your end users to do this first. Do you want them to open it in a browser? Because that's a, its own link and own QR code. Um, ask the user if they want to open Survey123 or the, or the browser. Um, that's a different version. So figure out who your people are and how they're going to see it. For us, because what we're doing is our friends and family address book, we just need the, the um, browser directly. If you're sending these to maybe three of your friends to test it for you, send them the QR code and the link. Because depending if they're going to take it on their phone, in their browser, or um, on their computer, you want to give them the option to use a link. Because if they're on their phone and you sent them an email, they're reading their email, and you only give them the QR code, now they got to wait till they get back to the desktop version, and then they can scan the QR code with their phone. So if you give them both options, they will use one. And it's, it's not that extra step of, I need to remember to do this when I get back home. Um, let's see. So we're only adding new records because it's not a repeat. 
And then for us, we are going to just keep it open. We don't need to close it at a specific date. This is the sharing your results. This is just going to be for me. Updating a survey. And groups that are managed. So for now, we don't need to do anything with this. We should test this. Um, so for now, let's just grab the link. And then I'm going to open up a different browser. So I'm on Edge now. And if everything went great, there won't be a red banner on the top. So we did OK. Everything is going to be smooth. Then we can um, you know, put some information in. We always test it with all the fun information. If it's text, you can just fake some text. How many years? We can put a photo in there. This now, if you if this is something you want to do, you can put your LinkedIn or your Facebook before you send this out to your friends, and then um, you can have them click on it. Maybe you need to right mouse click and open in a new tab, and that's how that works. Close and submit. I always submit because sometimes there's one thing that's really wonky, and I'm not sure where that comes from. Um, and it won't submit. So uh, make sure that you take your own surveys to make sure that uh, your end user sees exactly what they're supposed to see. So that's what I have for you today. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you for liking and subscribing our channel. We drop trainings in here all the time, and I want you to be the first one to be able to see them. At some point during your journey in Survey123, you might need a co-pilot or a room full of co-pilots. We have that for you. We have a coaching call that we do once a week for the price of a few tacos. And we meet up to answer each other's questions. I knew that I didn't have all the answers. Survey123 is a big universe. So what I did is I brought people together. And our community is growing. So whether you're watching this uh, late in 2024 or in 2025. Just know that we're growing. And life is better with friends. So get involved with folks who are like-minded. And some of them are going to have more experience than you, and some of them might have less experience. So we help those who need it, and we glean from those who have the knowledge. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you on the other side.